So I thought I'd show my face in one of my tutorials for once. Connect with your audience, build a community. Why the fuck not? Maybe my face will sell more products on the blender market. Give me money. So right now I'm working on new updates for the city generator. City generator. 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 Fuck. I created Asian inspired assets that are inspired by the types of buildings you see in Hong Kong. No, I put off these Asian signs on there. I hope I didn't do anything accidentally racist. If you feel offended by anything, uh, I don't care. Please don't cancel me. But in this video I want to show you how I created a city generator. At least uh, some of the very basic techniques for it. So here is how you can create a procedural building with geometry nodes in Blender. So let's start with a new file in Blender and let's add in a plane. Let's make this a little bit larger. 40 meters, let's say, let's say 40. And let's create a little bit more of a interesting shape. Let's extrude some edges here. So this plane is going to be the foundation of our building. By the end of this, with this procedural setup, we want to adjust the plane and automatically the building will contain the shape of the plane right here. You're also going to need some facade assets. These are a bunch of assets I created for the new city generator update. So I just grabbed three of them that belong together. Um, I'm not going to show you how to model these. There are a bunch of tutorials on modeling. Just make sure that these facades are all the same scale. And I made them with the dimensions three by three meters. So math will be a little bit easier later. I also going to grab all of these ground assets right here. Bring them into our scene right here. And let's put these facade assets into their own collection. Let's call this facade assets and let's grab all of the ground floor assets and put them into a collection and call it ground floor assets and let's get right into the geometry nodes let's open up a new tab go to geometry nodes new setup so the first thing we want to do is just make sure that we have only selected the outer edges of the plane we can do that by adding a delete geometry node and now we want to basically just delete all of the edges that are inside the face and just keep the edges on the outside. So let's add in a edge neighbor node and a compare node. And let's change it from bloat to integer. Plug the face count into input A and compare it to a number of one. And if we put this one into the selection and change the deletion mode from point to edge, we can see we got the edges on the outside. The plan is to just take all of these building assets we have modeled and all of these models and just array them on these edges. We first have to make sure that all of these edges are divided into three meter long pieces. So we can easily do that with remeshing it as a curve. So first of all, we want to turn this mesh into a curve. So we can use a mesh to curve node and then use a resample curve and let's change it from count to length and the length we want is three meters now you can see that some weird stuff is going to happen on the edges what we can do is add a split edges node before it is converted to a curve and now um, it treats these lines as separate objects which will keep it from treating it all as one curve now what we want to do is convert this back to a mesh so we can add a curve to mesh node and now we can add a mesh to points node and we want the edges to be our points let's increase the radius so we can see what we're doing now you can see that all of these points are basically three meters apart from each other if your assets are not three by three meters you basically just put in the numbers of the length of your assets in here so now we can add a instance on points node and our instance is going to be our facade assets collection drag and drop the collection in here and let's plug this in our instance let's check relative separate children and reset children so the next step is we want to get them to have the correct rotation so the way we are going to do this is by using the original mesh using a extrude node on top of it let's uncheck individual so it will not do this weird stuff with the uh, edges in the middle but just treat it as one extruded plane then we want to separate only the edges on the side 
let's use a separate geometry node, change it to face and use the side faces as a selection. So now you can see we just have the side faces right here. And now we want to use the normal of these faces and basically put the normal as the rotation of all of these facade assets. So let's use a sample nearest surface node and here we can put in our selection and add in a normal. So the attribute we want to capture here is a vector or normal. So let's put in the normal into the value. And now if we put this one into the rotation of our instances, things are a little bit messy because we need a align all to vector node, put it into the vector and change it to Y, to the Y axis. So let's add in a rotate, rotation node, set it to local and rotate it 180 degrees on the set axis. You can see if we adjust the mesh, it will automatically add a new facade pieces. Now we can see that we have these gaps in between the assets. That is because the length of our shape can't be always be exactly divided into th um, 3 meters. So what we want to do is basically just scale these assets so they will always fit together. We can simply do that by measuring the scale of the edges before the mesh is converted to points. So let's capture the attribute of the edges before they are converted to, to points. Let's capture attributes of the edges and add in a edge vertices node and now we can take the position of the first vertice of every edge and the second one and measure the distance between them with a vector math node and now we want to change the vector math node to distance add in position one and position two let's put this in right here and use this as our scale now everything is way too big because we have to also divided by the number of our length. We can just type in three right here. Now you can see everything fits in perfectly together. But you also can see that now the assets are also scaled in the Z direction and they have different height values, which we want to avoid. We can simply do this by adding a combine XYZ node and just using our scale value for the X value. Leave the Y to and Z to one. And now you can see everything fits together. So you can even extrude new edges right here. So now we want to add some height to the building. What we can do to do this is duplicating the points in the Z direction. So let's add in a duplicate elements node. Let's change the amount to 6. All of the duplicates are on the same position. So we want to offset every instance of the duplicate by 3 meters in height. We can simply do that by adding a set position node and then using a vector math node. And every duplicate has a index. First duplicates are 1, the second have the number 2. We can use these numbers and multiply them by the height of our assets. So put the duplicate index into first vector, change it from add to multiply. It's basically just a array modifier. Now we can put in three meters on the Z axis. Now we can control the height of our building with the amount of the duplicate. You also want to check pick instance so the instances won't be put on top of each other. So now we want to put these ground asset floors on the bottom of the building. So let's duplicate all of the nodes that come after the resample curve. Select all of these, duplicate, drag it down here and let's connect a mesh to curve node right here. And let's preview this. And let's also use the same rotation information and we don't need the duplicate elements because the ground floors are just one instance. And now we want to replace these facade assets with our ground floor assets. And now the ground floor assets have a different scale. We can see that these assets have a X dimension of 6 meters. So let's change the length to 6 meters and also divide the size by six meters and now you can see that they fit in perfectly now we can join this back together add in a joint geometry node and join these with our facade assets now they are intersecting with each other 
So just add in a set position node after the facade assets and offset them by the height of your ground floor assets. So right now the roof is empty and we want to add our original plane just on top of all of these assets back up here. Add in a joint geometry node before it is going to be offset for the ground floor and join our original geometry. Now we want to offset it so it will be at the top. So let's add in a set position node. So you could do this manually, but since we have all of these values, we can use a integer for the duplicate amount. Let's also set it to nine, put it into the amount. And now we can use the integer with a vector math node, set it to multiply. And multiply it by 3 on the z-axis. And if we plug in this to the um, offset, 9 times 3, the height of our assets, which will offset it by 27 meters. And now we adjust this value, everything works fine. So now you could add a new material for the roof. Let's call it roof material. Add a set material to the plane before it is joined with all of the other stuff and choose the roof material. And here we could just add in a concrete PBR material. This one. So that's basically it. Obviously a lot more went into the final city generator add-on. Maybe I will do some more tutorials and explain some more of the stuff I did there. So if you're interested in getting the city generator, there's a link to the Blender Market page under this video. Or take a look at my other products like the forest generator. If you want to generate procedural realistic forests, you know, buy something at least. Hopefully. I think if I just make enough Blender Market sales, I finally will be happy and have high self-esteem. This is how life is supposed to work, right? Help me find out.